Hi, I'm Marilyn. Welcome back to My Left Frying Pan. Hey, if you're new and you just found us, this is not your regular cooking show. And the reason is, is because even though I got my degree in foods and nutrition from the University of British Columbia, I was also an alumnus of the Second City Comedy Troupe, which makes me the funniest professional home economist in the entire world. Okay, according to me. Anyway, I'm also a chocoholic. <laughs> And today on the show, I'm going to be making my go-to favorite, most delicious chocolate cake I've ever made, and you are going to love it. I've been making this cake since my son was first born, and he's 27 years old, and yes, <laughs> I had him when I was 10. Anyway, um, I was lactose intolerant at the time. I'm no longer lactose intolerant. When I went through menopause, good things happened. Um, and his dad is casein intolerant, which is the protein in the milk. So the allergist told me, do not give your son any dairy. And as a chocoholic, how do you make a chocolate cake without dairy, butter, like, like all those things? So I did, I'm, I'm a genius, and I created this fabulous chocolate cake that has no dairy. It's lactose free, okay? So if you're lactose free, you can make it, but everybody I know makes it. It's like been on in all of my cookbooks. As a matter of fact, one of my friends in Winnipeg, uh, another professional home economist, Jennifer Dick, she sends me pictures twice a year from her two sons' birthday cakes because she always uses this cake. It's been a dinosaur. It's been a whole bunch of things. And I've been making this cake since Andrew was little. My favorite one was when I made the choo-choo train cake. Oh yeah. Okay, just a sidebar and a little note here. Do not serve a choo-choo train cake to little kids because, well, unless you tell their parents, because that black icing to make, you know, Thomas the Tank Train look really black, well, it dyed their teeth. So when their parents came over, they all had black teeth. But worst of all, the next day, there was other evidence that there was black uh, in the eye. Anyway, never mind. Okay, so this is my go-to cake. You're going to thank me. It is rich, moist, delicious, and it's easy to make. This is a one bowler. You just dump everything in the one bowl. You're welcome. Okay, it starts off with a little bit of uh, all-purpose flour, and then I'm using whole wheat flour because I, I can't help myself. I love you adding whole wheat flour. And then I'm using uh, natural cocoa powder. And if you watched uh, a lot of the stuff I talk about, I talk about natural, and natural is really important because the antioxidants that are good for your heart are in natural cocoa powder. Once it's been Dutch processed or processed, you're getting reduced uh, two-thirds of the antioxidants. So you want to keep as much as possible. I like this brand and I also like the fact that it's fair trade cocoa. It's got one and a half cups of sugar. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's a cake and it's a treat, okay? And we're serving this treat for Easter or for whatever big function comes up in the spring and it's got some baking soda. Then, because I'm not using dairy, I'm using a chocolate soy beverage. You can't call anything that isn't cow's milk milk in Canada because there's a license on it. So it's a soy beverage and that's the one I'm using chocolate. But you could use almond beverage if you wanted to if it was chocolate as long as nobody has a nut allergy. I'm using pure vanilla extract. I'm using one omega-3 egg. I'm using uh, some canola oil. I'm using a little bit of apple cider vinegar or you could use lemon juice. And I'm using, once again, one of my favorite ingredients, baby food prunes. You find them in the baby food section. They're already pureed and everything. So all you do is dump everything in a bowl and mix it. Oh my goodness. Somebody pinch me. I like to mix up the dry ingredients before I put the liquid in. And remember, I'm always talking about all our wonderful giveaways. Well, on April the 12th, we're going to give away one of these Breville hand mixers. And whoever came up with creating this must have been some kind of, I don't know, engineer, because look at this thing. It's got these little rubber edges so that it kind of scrapes the bowl and it doesn't make a lot of noise. It's a genius invention. Now we're going to add the liquid ingredients all at once. And it's done. Okay, how easy was that? Now, you will already have preheated your oven to 350 degrees and the rack should be in the middle of the oven. And I've already prepared my two round baking uh, pans. So, 
I lightly oiled both of them, all right, so it won't stick. And now these are really old uh, baking pans, which I love. And we're going to divide this equally between the two pans. Just make sure you kind of go around the edges to even them off. And then into the oven for, I think it's about 30 minutes. I, I kind of forget. I got all excited about the chocolate. So just check the recipe below. Whee! All right, so the cakes have been baked and they're cooling on a wire rack. And they really, they can't cool inside of that cake pan because they'll get all steamy and wet. And, and one of the ways they get a nice flat surface is that um, the cakes kind of sunk a little tiny bit, as you can see. So I'm just going to fill that up with icing. But because I want a flat surface to ice the, the bottom layer, I'm just going to use a serrated knife and, and just kind of even off that bottom layer so that the top layer will stick on better, okay? And, um, oh, I think I have to eat this. Oh, oh, yeah. oh that's so good. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. That is a fantastic cake. All right. The icing that I made, the recipe's down below. So just get the recipe. And I doubled it because I'm doing a great big, huge cake here. And so I'm just going to give it another little bit of a beat. It should be really soft and fluffy. If yours isn't, then add a little bit more of the soy beverage. Um, and then it should be nice and, and creamy. Okay. And turn it off and we'll get rid of the beaters here. All right. Now this this is what you want to give your kids to have a little lick uh, for a treat. Okay, so we'll save that for, or maybe we'll give that to my big kid, my big kid. Hey, honey, you want the beaters? Come and get them. <laughs> okay, just his hand. There you go. Oh, okay, good. All right, so here's how I ice a cake. And I'm a big fan of Yo-Yo Max. She's got a fantastic YouTube channel. And so uh, I know I'm probably doing this all wrong, but <laughs> listen, you know, let me know how I did, okay? So I like to anchor the cake and I put a little blob of icing in the middle. And then I get pieces of parchment paper and sort of stick it onto the, the blob of icing. And the reason I'm doing that is when I ice the cake, then there's no gobs of icing on the on the cake plate okay so that hopefully will stick and then you put this right on the center all right so that they're sort of equal around so that's pretty good and then we're going to spoon on oh, some of the fantastic chocolate icing hold on to the parchment paper and then just do sort of a thin coating of the icing it doesn't even have to go all the way to the edges and i'm using one of these wonderful spatulas it's so easy then you put on your next layer and you want the bake side up so there won't be as many crumbs. And then here's the trick that I learned. And yo, yo, Max, you're going to let me know if I did this right. You put all of the icing on the top, like all of it. Okay. So there's a big blob of icing right on the, it's a mountain of chocolate yum. Okay. It's all on the top. And then let's get rid of this. And then... <laughs> Let's all hope this works. You know, it always works when you're by yourself. And as soon as you're on, you know, YouTube, it goes a bit weird. So then you, you push it over to the edges so that you can draw it down the edges. All right. So you're pushing it and pushing it. And then I, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm not doing it to camera, but I'll, so you drag some of it down and go right to the edge. And so what you're doing Maybe I'm going to turn this around so you can see more, but I'm, I'm left-handed. Okay, I'm going to do it right-handed. So you're, what you're doing is you're pushing the icing down, and it's okay that you're hitting the parchment paper because the parchment paper is protecting... <laughs> Does the top of my hair look any good? <laughs> anyway, okay, so right down to the edge of the parchment. All right, I got to do it left-handed. That was too hard. <laughs> Just let all my neighbors know that I was making chocolate cake. Okay, and then you can kind of swirl it around on the top like that. Come sa. Beautiful, easy, fantastic. And now here's the best part. You should really let it set for about five minutes, but I'm in a hurry. So you very gently 
pull this off. <gasps> and you see, all of this would have been on the cake plate and none of it is on the cake. Uh, I mean, none of it is on the cake plate. But <laughs> it's a little off center. No, don't do that. Anyway, okay, the best chocolate cake ever. So my last little home economist tip is that, you know how you cut cake and you get, you know, crumbs all over everything? Here's the deal. So you slice through and then when you pull it out, you're going to wipe off the knife with a damp, clean uh, dishcloth. And then you're going to do another slice, another cut and pull it out. Oh, and I forgot to get my little um, spatula. So here's another little one. All right. And then you're lifting up the cake and joy of joy. <laughs> of course it didn't work. <laughs> I'm going to cut one more. Come on. Stop bugging me. Look at, oh, see all that icing? That would have gone smeared all over that other piece. Okay. So here we go. Okay. Look at that perfect, beautiful slice of yum. Okay. So Hey, listen, remember, uh, it's April the 12th on Facebook Live. We don't know what time. If you, you know what? We did 11 o'clock. We've done 9 o'clock. We've done 9.30. Let us know what time worked best for you to watch the Facebook Live for the draw for the, the Breville Hand Mixer. And in the meantime, if you want to subscribe, click on my face. And uh, last week's recipe is over there. So in the meantime, I'm wishing you all peace, love, and fiber. And uh, oh, my God, that's so good. Oh. Oh, honey. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the meters. Oh, good. We don't even have to wash them. <laughs> See you next time.